Hello. Last time we ended up reading a byte from memory. Reading an instruction code, in fact. Which is a bit unusual thing to do. So now we are going to add some other kind of data to this program. In fact, we are going to add a data section. With this command. We give the section a name, up to 8 characters, but this is not really important. What is important is to give the section the right attributes. Data, readable and writable. And now we are going to put some bytes there with db command, data bytes. We can just give a list of numbers. Each of the numbers is no more than two hexadecimal digits, so that it fits in a byte. Let's also add some label, so that we can use this address and read the data. And let's just read into AL register. Because the section is marked as data, the debugger has automatically shown it here. You can see the three bytes that we defined. And when we execute the instruction, it reads from this address. And it reads the byte for one into AL. Let's also try something called indirect addressing. Instead of using this address to read memory, we can use an address stored in a register. So let's take this address, store it in EBX register, and use EBX for addressing. The result should be the same. So now we have this address in EBX. We read the byte, it is for one as expected. And now we can learn about a new instruction, add, which we can use to add a number to a register or memory. In this case we are going to add 2 to EBX. So this is going to increase the address by 2. And because addressing is up to one byte, uh, we are moving the address two bytes up. So instead of reading this byte, we are going to read this byte. So the address has been incremented by two. And what we read into AL is for free. Just like we can increment address, we can also add something to the data that we read. And we can even store this data back to memory.
So let's see how this works. We read byte for free. Now add 5 to it. This is for 8. And we store for 8 back. You may have noticed that debugger is showing ASCII values here for all the bytes. ASCII is the standard encoding that we use to encode text in computers. We can look it up and find out that indeed for 1, for 2, for 3 are hexadecimal codes of ABC characters. There are also lowercase variants and they have codes 616263. So you may notice that we can simply add 2O, hexadecimal 2O, that is 32, to a code of uppercase letter and get a code of lowercase letter. So let's try this trick. Now we have modified this capital C letter into a lowercase c. It is possible to simplify this sequence. Instead of reading into register, adding to register and storing back to memory, we can just add directly to memory. But if we try to assemble this, we are going to get an error. This is because the assembler does not know what size is intended for this instruction. When we had add al to o hex, then it was obvious that this, this is 8-bit because al is the name of an 8-bit register. And in this case, uh, this memory value could be 8-bit, could be 32-bit. So we need to tell the assembler that this is a byte. And the result is still the same. We can also combine adding to data and adding to address. So we have this address in EBX. We add 2 out to the first byte. Now this is small a. Now we increase the address and again add 2 out to the byte at, at this position. This time the byte that has been modified is this one. It is now lowercase b.
to convert all three letters, we could just duplicate this card. <coughs> But there is another mm, trick that we can use. We can use a jump instruction. A jump allows to tell CPU where it should, where it should uh, continue executing instructions. We can tell it to jump to this address. So after it executes these two additions, it is going to jump back to this address and keep executing them. Let's see it in practice. This converted the first letter, we jump back. Now the second one, jump back, third one. And it is going to keep doing this. Adding two out two consecutive bytes in memory. It could keep doing this forever. But on modern computers, Sooner or, or later it is going to try to read and write uh, memory that it is not allowed to, and then the program is simply going to crash. Either way, this is not really something that we wanted here. So we need uh, some way of cutting the lap sh loop short. So first, let's make a counter. We are going to have number 3 in ECX. This is number of uh, repetitions that we would like to do. And now let's use another new instruction, sub, which is just like add, but instead of adding a number, it subtracts a number from register. So this is still going to keep going forever, but this time we have a counter that counts down to zero. And I would like you to pay attention to one value here. The Z flag is a flag in the CPU that is set only when the result of operation is zero. So when we add and subtract something, when the result is zero, then this flag is going to be set. Now we have one in ECX. So after we subtract one from it, we get zero and the Z flag is set. And we can very easily use this information. We can modify the jump to be jump depending on Z flag, JZ or J and Z are two such instructions. J and Z is a jump that only happens if Z flag is not zero, uh, is not set. This is jump if not zero. So we are going to keep jumping back as long as the result of this subtraction is not zero. And let's also put some dummy instruction down here so that we can see that this instruction is going to be finally executed after this 
loop is completed. Okay, we subtract one from ECX. This is two, not zero. So we jump back, do it again. It is one, not zero. Once more. And the loop has ended. We converted all three letters. And there is also one more thing we can simplify here. Instead of using add instruction, we can simply use increment instruction, inc, and similarly we can do decrement for ECX. These are shorter and faster variants of adding and subtracting one. And the loop now does the same thing. This is all this time. Thank you for watching.